Hi, my name is Alan. I run a small company providing energy performance certificates, EPCs, in Buckinghamshire and Oxfordshire, England. Our website is www.miltonkeensepc.co.uk. I have made this video to briefly explain when your property needs an energy performance certificate, what is the purpose of the EPC and what it consists of. An energy performance certificate is needed for most properties which are rented out or sold. The exceptions are few and far between, for example houses due for demolition. So if you are renting out a property you will need an EPC. If you are selling it you will need a home information or HIPS pack. That also includes an EPC. Why is the EPC a legal requirement? Our government, like lots of others, has brought the EPC in for two reasons. The first is to cut down the amount of carbon dioxide released into the atmosphere and therefore slow down global warming. There is still some controversy about global warming of course. There can be no dispute about the second reason why energy use must be cut down which is that an uncontrolled and rapidly expanding human population will eventually use up all of the planet's possible fuels. The less we use the longer the oil coal and gas will last. So the energy performance certificate is a compulsory order of all properties to be sold or rented out. Its aim is to cut down carbon dioxide emissions and save energy. The order is carried out by a qualified domestic energy assessor or DEA. The DEA has had to sit, pay for and pass exams to qualify him or her for the role. They are licensed by the government and carry accreditation cards. The DEA works through a set list of things which have a bearing on the efficiency of energy use in the property. The question sheet runs to six pages and there, there are up to a hundred questions to be answered depending on the complexity of the building. The more it has been extended and altered the more complex it becomes. The most important of the things that he looks at and this is not an exclusive list, are the age of the dwelling. Building regulations have got stricter over the years, so the older place, unless it's been updated, the lower the level of insulation will be. The type of dwelling, an enclosed mid-storey flat, loses a lot less heat than a detached house. Its dimensions, including the area of wall which is heat loss, which is to say is not sheltered by other dwellings. In a detached house, all of the outside walls are heat loss, in a flat, it may be that there is only one outside wall. The wall and roof construction types. Insulated cavity walls let out less heat than uninsulated single brick ones. Flat roofs differ from pitch roofs. The amount of insulation in the roof and walls, if any. How old the boiler is, what fuel it uses and what type it is. The latest condensing boilers are much more efficient than previous generations. The boiler type is the greatest single factor in energy use. Radiator heating controls. Are there thermostatic valves on the radiators? Is there a room thermostat or a programmer? Water heating. Whether there is hot, hot water tank and if there is, does it have an immersion heater, thermostat and insulation? Are the windows double or single glazed? If there are extensions or a conservatory, some of these questions will be repeated. So, armed with his six page questionnaire and his 200 page manual, his ladder, measures and tools, the intrepid DEA makes his report. He then returns home, sits down quietly with a nice cup of tea and types his notes into a computer program. The computer program then disgorges a five page report. The first page has two graphs on it which grade the property on a scale from zero, which is the worst, to 100, both in its energy efficiency and carbon dioxide emission rating. Very few buildings score zero. You'd think that a score of nothing would only be possible in an open-sided tent, but I have seen a building score zero. To score 100, your property would have to be exceptional. You would need to be producing more energy than you consumed most places fall in between. The scores are graded in bands as you can see. 
the average band for an existing property is E. For a new dwelling, the average band is B. The graphs also show what band your dwelling can be moved into if you follow the recommendations. The recommendations follow later in the report. As you might expect, they are linked directly to questions. If you don't have a very good level of aloft insulation, you will be advised to increase it. If you have an old boiler, you will be advised to change it and so on. And that essentially is an EPC. You'll find more about it on our website www.miltonkeensepc.co.uk See you there. Goodbye.